Good morning to all of you on this beautiful, yeah, beautiful October morning. Who would have guessed that it'd be this warm this time of the year? I'm uh, Pastor Tegmeyer. I'm retired pastor from uh, Messiah and Emporia. I was there for uh, 31 years and we have now uh, moved to Wellsville. So we reside in, in Wellsville. It's kind of halfway between our our kids, we still have one son that lives in Emporia and the others live in the Kansas City area. Uh, so it's kind of halfway in between. So it's a, a good place to be. It's good to be with all of you this morning and it's good to have uh, you here to worship together and uh, praise God for the many blessings that he, he brings into our lives. There is one correction in the worship folder. If you would look at page 8 in your worship folder, the communion hymn, it's in the wrong place. So we'll go right from the Apostles' Creed into the sermon, and we'll do the communion hymn during the distribution uh, later on in the service. So if you can just uh, kind of pay attention to that, uh, we'll kind of follow that order. So as we begin this morning, let's join together in the opening hymn, Thee Will I Love, My Strength, My Tower. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? 
But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as His people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We take a moment for silent reflection on our own lives. We confess together, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We read responsibly the intro for today, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord be with you and also with you we pray almighty God whom to know is everlasting life grant us to know your son Jesus to be the way the truth and the life that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to life eternal through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God's word for this morning, our Old Testament reading, is taken from the book of Isaiah, the 25th chapter, beginning with verse 1. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with a shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was still. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, 
a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading for this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 1. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Yodia and I urge Syntyche to be in the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women. For they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel 
together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to the 21st chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. <clears throat> those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is taken from that gospel reading that I just read to you, the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter, those uh, first 14 verses. So let me ask you this question. What's your first thought when you hear the word missions? For many, many years of my life, the first thought that came to mind was somebody who went to some faraway country to tell others about Jesus. That person was a missionary. And I remember as a child, my home congregation would have mission festivals, usually in the month of August sometime. The worship service would be down in the, in the grove, a place in the pasture of one of the members under a, under a bunch of trees. And we would sit on these plank benches and scratch in the dirt while the pastor was up, there, was up there preaching. And usually the preacher for the day was a missionary. Someone who had been to another part of the world to proclaim Jesus to people who had never heard of Jesus before. And so for many, many years that's what I thought a missionary was. And that's what I thought a missionary should be. Well, in, in part anyway, I was correct. We still send missionaries uh, to various parts of the world to proclaim, to proclaim Jesus to anyone who will listen. For years, our, uh, if you remember and maybe are aware of, our Kansas district was uh, 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 supported Pastor Heine and his mission work in Guinea, West Africa. Uh, pastor Hosh, the pastor that took my place at Messiah and Emporia, uh, was in Peru for three years as a missionary. But really, as, as we look at the words of our text for today, uh, God reminds us that missionaries aren't just about going to faraway places, but really each of us is called and sent out to live and speak Jesus to people. Now Jesus, in the words of our text, not only talks to us about our response to the gospel, but he talks to us about missions and the need for people to go out into this world of ours to the street corners, if you will. One of the translations uh, mentions the street corners in this lesson. And we go there to share the gospel with people. Kind of like we're doing here this, this morning. And in doing so, he tells the parable of the wedding banquet. And he relates this parable to those invited to the banquet prepared by Jesus, really in the glories of heaven. The big day, the wedding day, was all planned. Invitations had been sent out. Maybe many of you have been through that. And finally, the wedding day arrived. The king sent out messengers and told those invited, come on, the banquet is ready. Come celebrate this special day. But those invited refused to come. And so the king sends out more messengers, messengers saying, come on, it's all ready. I butchered the fattened calf. The steaks are hot on the grill. Come join in the celebration. But those invited <clears throat> paid no attention. They were busy with all kinds of things. One went to his field, another to his business, and then of all things, the invited guests took the messengers, beat them, and killed them. <clears throat> now, it's interesting to me that Jesus is really talking there to those people gathered around him. He's talking to the children of Israel, particularly to the leaders, to the scribes and Pharisees. They were God's chosen people. God had called them. God had blessed them throughout many years. But they didn't want to listen. And they really didn't have time for God. They didn't take his word to heart. They were the invited ones. 
They were the guests invited, but they refused to come. They refused God's gift to them in Jesus. In fact, what happened? They took the messenger, namely Jesus, and what did they do to him? They killed him. They condemned him to die, and they took him outside the city of Jerusalem and had him nailed to a cross. Well, Jesus continues with the parable, and he says, Since they won't come, go out to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone that you find. And so they went out and they brought people from all over, from all the different walks of life. Good people, bad people, our text says. Anyone they saw, they invited to this special wedding banquet. And the people listened. And the people came. But it's interesting, as the king walked around the wedding hall, he noticed someone who wasn't wearing the wedding clothes, the wedding robe. And he asked, friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? Our text says the man was speechless, and so they tied him up and threw him out. So what's the point? Well, God still invites God invites you and me, your friends, your neighbors, your family, the stranger down the street, as well as people on the other side of the world. God invites, and God sends out messengers to invite. And as in the day of Jesus, so today, some listen, some don't. Many people will say and have said, God God, I'm I'm too busy to come to the celebration. I have all these things to take care of. I've got my work, you know. I've got things to do at home because I I don't have time during the week. And and you know, Lord, Sunday is the only day that I can do things for myself. And it's the only day that I have to spend time with my family. And Lord, I just don't have time to come to the celebration. I don't know whether you've any, ever heard anyone use that kind of language or maybe even you have used it yourself. God invites. God invites, but many don't listen. He invites to the banquet. But what's the wedding clothes? What's the wedding clothes all about in this parable? Jesus reminds those Jewish leaders and all of us that there is only one way into this celebration. You have to have the wedding robe. Maybe someone has asked you this question. What will you say to God when you are standing in front of him and he asks you, why should I let you into my heaven? Why should I let you into my heaven? What what will you say? What's your wedding clothes? What's your wedding robe? Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The wedding clothes is Jesus. Faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Jesus is the only way into the wedding banquet. He is the only way to eternal life, that glorious celebration that happens every time a child of God is called from this life to the glories of heaven. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, we are clothed with Jesus. Already in our baptism, we were clothed with the righteousness of of Jesus. We were clothed with his perfect life. We were clothed with his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. We were clothed with his glorious resurrection. By the grace of God, we are clothed with the wedding garment through faith in this Jesus. God's word reminds us, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be what? You will be saved. So 
So tell me, do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus is the only way to eternal life? He is the wedding clothes, and without it, you don't get into the banquet? If we really believe that, then we have some work to do. How many of you know someone who doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? If you know of someone like that, then God is asking you to share Jesus with them. You have a friend, a family member who doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior? What if you would invite them to come and worship with you? In fact, what if you would pick them up on Sunday morning and bring them with you? Each of us can do that. It's not difficult. Won't you come to church with me on Sunday? That's it. Throughout my years of ministry, I've seen it happen often. I remember some of my eighth grade confirmation kids inviting their friends to come to confirmation class with them. And there, as we studied that word together, God touched the hearts and the lives, and they came to know and they came to believe on Jesus as their Savior. Those eighth grade confirmation kids were missionaries. They were the messengers God sent out to invite. That's missions. And God is calling us to be missionaries where we are, where we live, where we work, where we play. You and I are God's messengers. He is sending us out to the street corners to invite others to come. And you never know when that opportunity might come. Be ready. Be ready to invite, to point others to this Jesus who lived and died and rose again so that sinners like you and I and those people in our, this world of ours might know, might know that they have life, life in Jesus. By the grace of God, you and I have been clothed with the wedding garment. Rejoice in that. Thank God for that gift. And every morning as you start a new day, ask God to show you where he might use you that day to be his messengers. You and I, we are missionaries. Missionaries where we live and work and play. Every day God is sending us out to our street corners wherever that might be, to inv invite our friends, our co-workers, our family, the stranger on the street, to come to the banquet. My prayer is that God the Holy Spirit make us bold, that he empower us to be bold in our witness for Jesus and daily live as messengers who proclaim that Savior to a dying world. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. I would invite you to join me in a word of prayer. <clears throat> God of grace, we thank you for clothing us with the wedding garment of Jesus' righteousness. We thank you that in your grace you called us to be your people and you granted us that forgiveness, that gift of forgiveness and life. <clears throat> Lord, we recognize that there are many in our world without Jesus, some of whom we know. Lead us, Lord, to be missionaries, the missionaries that you have called us to be. Open our mouths and open our lives to share Jesus with those we know. Grant us the power and the boldness of the Holy Spirit to use every opportunity to live and teach the love of Jesus. Keep us strong in our faith that always we may trust you and know your presence in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord of the church, we pray for your church throughout the world. Lead your church to be faithful to your word, constant in prayer, filled with zeal for the gospel. Bless and guide the leaders of the church, pastors, teachers, and all others, that they may faithfully carry out the responsibilities entrusted to them. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for our nation, for our leaders, our president and first lady as they recover from COVID, for members of Congress, our state and local leaders that working together they would serve our nation and above all serve you. Lead the citizens of our nation to unite and join together to aid and encourage one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those affected by another hurricane, those suffering from wildfires, those struggling with the COVID virus, all who are suffering in any way, especially those listed in our bulletin this morning and those that each of us holds dear in our hearts. God, in your grace, grant healing where healing is needed and comfort all with your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
take, eat this true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in His peace. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls each of us by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We join together in the closing hymn, Lord, take my hand and lead me. Good morning. Can you all hear me? Excellent. It, it, it's good to see you all again. I, I wish I had better news about the nominations committee. Unfortunately, I do not. Pastor Tegmeyer talked today about being missionaries, and I'm here to highlight another way that you can serve that mission of spreading the news of Jesus to others, and that's by being a leader in our congregation. As Pastor said today, 
and I have said this too, I don't have time. I know that. None of us has time. We choose to find the time. We choose to make the time. And I'll tell you, and I've told many others this as well, even in my position, I feel like I still don't give enough time to Emmanuel. I feel like there's still more I could do. So if you feel that way as well, this could be an opportunity. I also hear the, well, I don't want to screw this up. The council will tell you, I have screwed up many times, many times. Let's just say, I don't want to have another three and a half hour council meeting. It's embarrassing to admit that out loud. But here's the thing. We also have a very forgiving congregation, and I'm very grateful for that. We have put into practice that love and forgiveness that Jesus provides to each of us. I have felt that every day, and I'm very grateful. What about the, well, I don't know what the future of our congregation is going to be. Well, I don't know that either. I can tell you that when I was elected as vice president in 2018, I didn't know that we wouldn't have a permanent pastor, that we would be going through a period of transition and evaluation, that we would be in a pandemic. Who knows what's going to happen? None of us do. So please understand that all of us are in that same boat. But we need leaders. There are some potential ramifications if we do not have at least a treasurer and a vice president. Without the treasurer, the bills don't get paid, including the people who provide this worship service, the people who run our church building to make sure that others can use it, that we have the opportunity to even share the love of God through this worship service and through the other services that we provide. Now, I don't mean to be alarmist, but I'm kind of freaking out. <laughs> I'll be perfectly blunt with you. Ultimately, God will find a way to get these things done, but I hope that he will find that way through you, through me, by finding that spot in your heart for the Holy Spirit to say, you know what, you can do this. All you have to do is listen and say, yes, God, send me, I'm willing. If you have any questions about the positions that are open, as I mentioned, we do desperately need a vice president and a treasurer. We also need a couple of board chair positions and Christy is also looking for her replacement as the financial secretary. Please come talk to me, email me, text me, call me, however you want is fine with me. I am happy to answer any questions or put you in touch with the people who can answer those questions. But all I'm asking is that you answer that call from God. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Mark Crabtree. I'm here as part of a COVID-19 uh, migration ad hoc committee. And what that is, is just a, a group of people willing to create a safe environment for us to worship and to come up with some future plans for us. So I wanna let you know that your COVID migration team wants to add an 11.30 in sanctuary service starting next week, October 18th. So October 18th, followed by the 25th, followed by November 1st, we will go into, into the rest of fall and into winter offering an in sanctuary service and it's 11.30. So in the back of your bulletin, you'll see the, the schedule. And the schedule is that 
Our praise in the parking lot will continue at 8.30. The Bible studies for kids and the adult Bible study online will happen at 10. And the in-sanctuary service will start at 11.30. So there's about 30 minutes on either side of Bible study. And the whole goal is that if you're here and you want to get home for the Bible study, you have time. If you're at home for the Bible study and wish to come inside to the sanctuary, you have time. So as a committee, we'll continue to evaluate this and we want your feedback and see how things are working. So just uh, be aware of the schedule and be ready to, to let us know how things are working for you. If you decide to come to the in-sanctuary service, you're going to need to sign up. Douglas County allows us to have 45 people. Pastor in the house means we have 44. If we have volunteers, I would like two. That gets us down to 43. We need a greeter. We need someone to check temperatures and make sure that everybody's safe that comes into the sanctuary. We need an usher, somebody that can help guide people into the sanctuary, seat socially distanced, find a program and a bulletin, understand how the service is going to work, and help with communion because communion is going to be offered during the service on the second and fourth Sundays. It is not a position that necessarily has to be held by an elder, so anybody could do this. So we're looking to have volunteers, and we won't be able to have the in-sanctuary service unless we at least have a couple people who are willing to come to the in-sanctuary service and help provide as volunteers. If you come to the in-sanctuary service, remember to bring your mask. We'll socially distance. We'll have sanit uh, sanitary um, gel available for you. It is a spoken word service. We won't have any singing. And be aware that there is communion offered the second and the fourth Sundays. Again, this is our schedule going into fall and into winter. And we want anybody's comments ideas that you can send to this wonderful committee of people who have tried to help us create these safe environments. So talk with Don Cook, myself, Mark Crabtree, Dee Katzer, Sharon Hedinger, Lisa Lom, Nancy Lom, Trisha Matheson, Chuck Peterson, Ralph Planthold, Ken Rohrberg, Mandy Sponholt, Stan Vickers, Kim Whitman, and those that I forgot to mention. I really appreciate everybody's help in making this service here work and making an in-sanctuary service work. Uh, my last two plugs, I'm, as I call some of our members as an elder, I find out that, that they're not aware that we audio record the services. We place them on a YouTube channel. And I've, I've found some people who are just delighted to hear that. So if you're uh, able to let people know who are not here today, they can listen to the service on a YouTube channel and they can get to that from our church website. Uh, I also, backing up, I didn't remember to tell you, if, did I tell you that if you come to the service, you have to sign up and you sign up by contacting Leslie in the church office or you sign up by going to the church website. You go to the church website, there is a calendar. You scroll down to the to the event Sunday October 18th 1130 service November 1st 1130 service you click on the service and there's a link for you to sign up and be a part of the service you can come to the church and I've got a pretty good feeling that we're not going to reach 42 so you can come to the church and you can sign the sheet that you would like to attend by signing would lets us know for contact tracing that we can let people know if a challenge or an issue was to uh, occur. So please do sign up. And last, uh, just give a shout out to Pastor Bert Tegemeyer and thank him for being a part of our Sunday services. We've had some wonderful, blessed pastors who've been a part of our, our worship each week, and I, I just have, have been enthralled with all the wonderful help that we've had. 
So go and blessings on your Sunday and enjoy.